Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I kind of skipped over a few things. You all seen me remove steering wheels and turn signal switches a bunch of times. And anyway, so what I'm doing is I am getting ready to pull the linkage out of the column. Um, as soon as I get my screwdriver here. Yeah, yesterday this messed up. Not good. Okay, well. I just broke another linkage in the column. That linkage is notorious for breaking. I went and got one last night. And I need to get this fixed before the storm hits. Yeah, we got another storm coming. Not too fond of that, but it is what it is. Oh yeah, you also want to disconnect the battery. What on earth is keeping this thing? There we go. And you see down in here what's broke. Yeah, I have... I bet I put a hundred of these in. I could actually take and pull that out and start it with a key <laughs> or start it with a jumper wire if I had to. Well, anyway, it's already down this far, so might as well fix it the right way. Put this in the back with my bucket of junk. Oh, yeah, the original set of keys it's not too bad uh, this little retaining pin here just fell out at some point not too important it looks like that one up here oh anyway okay I'm gonna work on getting the rest of it out be back these little pins here they make um, special little slide hammers and all kinds of tools to extract them. But if you don't do a lot of them, the easiest way to do it is get like a little screw that threads into it and take a pair of vice grips and clamp onto it like that and just grab and yank them out. Not much to them. Sometimes you might have to get like a little hammer and tap on it just a little bit, but it does not take much to get them out. And I'll just do the other side. Just like that. That's relatively easy. I'm sure I'm going to get some negative comments over that one. Who cares? Oh yeah, and there's a snap ring right here that you will need to remove. And after that, the upper column housing slides right out. So we fast forwarded a little bit anyway. I've got all this all cleaned out and the new uh, linkage all put in. Uh, so I think that it had a little bit of dirt build up which kind of made it kind of hard to work. So I got all that cleaned up and now it's just ready to put back together. I might skip over that a little bit. So I can hurry up and get it together. I've got a ton of other things I gotta get done. Not enough time in the day. This is probably one of the hardest parts of doing the actual repair. 
Oops. Sometimes they go right together. Sometimes they don't. And this is going to be one of those times that it doesn't. Wow. One pin in, and, oops, that's backwards, two pins in. Okay, so that wasn't as hard as I had set it out to be. Bad enough, though. And the little gear thingy sits in here. Just like that. Oh yeah, there's a snap ring that you have to put back on. Now, we work on putting the outer housing on, which is not too awful hard. It's hard enough, but not the most difficult in the world. There is a space in the gears of this ignition that it lines up in, and it all goes together. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm detecting I'm going to have to replace a lock cylinder in the near future. Here we go again. I usually don't have any problem with this. But today is going to be a royal pain. I think I'm going to have to put a lock cylinder in it. I think this lock cylinder just about had it. Okay. All right, I am back with a new lock cylinder. I had one. I have three or four, but I couldn't find one that had, a, had two keys to it. So it was used. But, oh well. It works. I might re-key one later on. I don't know. Yep. 
here we go. It's on. That was the only problem. The old lock cylinder was chewed up. It wouldn't hardly turn. Just put the screws that holds it back in. After I drop it, it's all right. I think I'll move the camera around so you can see what's going on. I don't know if you can see very well or not, but I'm putting these screws back in it. See, it turns real nice now. I'll have to get a key made or re-key a cylinder. I have a cylinder in there that has no key for it, so I might just end up doing that, just re-keying one. We'll see. We will see. Now this goes back in. There's two silver screws that holds the turn signal switch in, and there's three black screws. They're all approximately the same length, but the screws that holds the turn signal switch in are shouldered differently. See, they have a high shoulder on them. You probably, the camera won't focus too well, but that's how those go. Coming up soon at North Carolina F-150 that you saw me working on back last summer. I gotta put a switching valve on it. I finally figured out what's wrong with the fuel tank. I found that there's an actual problem with the switching valve. All right. It don't seem like it's quite right, but uh... Yeah, it's not. I don't have to adjust all that. It's no big deal. Okay. I have all this stuff together. Uh, you see, I've got the original, uh, looks like the original lock cylinder back in it. Well, it's not. Uh, it's another one that I had, and here's the original key. What I did is I re-keyed a lock cylinder just for this. I just didn't want to go through the daunting task of having to get all new keys made for everything and finding all my other ones. It's just easier that way. When you when you work on those, you want to disconnect the battery. Uh, of course, that's already been hooked all up. I had to adjust the ignition switch but it starts now like it's supposed to. No, well, it idles better than it did. Or a lot better than it did. That's because it has a new fuel filter on it. Okay, well, I'm in the process of picking up. Preparing for the storm. We are under a winter storm warning. It's already clouded up. Oh, yeah. Short sleeves. 20 after 2. Okay, let's get this shit picked up. Thanks for watching.